Lesson 24. I do not perceive my own best interests. In no situation that arises do you realize the outcome that would make you happy. Therefore, you have no guide to appropriate action and no way of judging the result. What you do is determined by your perception of the situation, and that perception is wrong. It is inevitable, then, that you will not serve your own best interests. Yet they are your only goal in any situation which is correctly perceived. Otherwise, you will not recognize what they are. If you realized that you do not perceive your own best interests, you could be taught what they are. But in the presence of your conviction that you do know what they are, you cannot learn. The idea for today is a step toward opening your mind so that learning can begin. The exercises for today require much more honesty than you are accustomed to using. A few subjects honestly and carefully considered in each of the five practice periods which should be undertaken today will be more helpful than a more cursory examination of a large number. Two minutes are suggested for each of the mind-searching periods which the exercises involve. The practice periods should begin with repeating today's idea, I do not perceive my own best interests, followed by searching the mind with closed eyes for unresolved situations about which you are currently concerned. The emphasis should be on uncovering the outcome you want. You will quickly realize that you have a number of goals in mind as part of the desired outcome, and also that these goals are on different levels and often conflict. In applying the idea for today, name each situation that occurs to you and then enumerate carefully as many goals as possible that you would like to be met in its resolution. The form of each application should be roughly as follows. In the situation involving, I would like blank to happen and blank to happen and so on. Try to cover as many different kinds of outcomes as may honestly occur to you even if some of them do not appear to be directly related to the situation or even to be inherent in it at all. If these exercises are done properly, you will quickly recognize that you are making a large number of demands of the situation which have nothing to do with it. You will also recognize that many of your goals are contradictory that you have no unified outcome in mind, and that you must experience disappointment in connection with some of your goals, however the situation turns out. After covering the list of as many hoped for goals as possible, for each unresolved situation that crosses your mind, say to yourself, I do not perceive my own best interests in this situation and then go on to the next one. Jesus says, if you realize that you don't know your own best interest, you could be taught what they are. But in the, con in the presence of your conviction that you do know what they are, you cannot learn. That's why the practice of I do not know my own best interest is so powerful, so, so helpful. Saying that in no situation do you realize the outcome that will make you happy. Therefore you have no guide to appropriate action and no way of judging the result. What you do is determined by your perception of the situation, and that perception is wrong. It is inevitable, then, that you will not serve your own best interests. 
Yet they are your only goal in any situation which is correctly perceived. So this is a very helpful lesson. Saying that this lesson requires more honesty that, than you're accustomed to using. And so in the exercise, he's saying we need to focus on the goals that we believe we want, the, the desired outcome. And we need to see that these goals, there are a number of goals that are on different levels and they often conflict. So it shows we don't really know what we want with all these conflicting goals in the mind. So it's important to uncover the outcome that we want. And it can be so many different things. It can be, and they are always tied to self-concept. I want to be liked. I want to experience some kind of enjoyment pleasure, fun, according to ego, body, fun, want to be recognized. There can be many different outcomes. So these are the ones we need to first be able to identify. Because we use every situation to try to get the goal, you know, to try to get the outcome. But when we learn that we don't know our best interests, we can actually erase those outcomes, those ideas about situations, about what, what the situation is for. Because if they're used for this, for ego goals, like such things that I named, it's very flat, it's not, it won't make us happy because it's the ego's outcome and it has to do with a personal identity. So to just erase those and come to this point of I do not perceive my own best interest so yeah, that's what we need to come to. I don't perceive my own best interest because then we will be shown and the Holy Spirit will come into our mind as an experience. And that is very, 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 very different than any personal goal. So first of all, we need to give ourselves the space to do that. So hopefully you're able to do this exercise in this longer meditation. He's saying we should do it five times um, today, this, this exercise, and name the situation and see how many goals that you have set up in the situation. It was very good, very practical. I do not perceive my own best interests. Did you notice, did anybody notice that you have goals that, that are, yeah, that aren't in your best interests. Yeah. I want to share, Karen. Mm. No. Just saw the mind, mm. what it is doing. Yeah. yeah, and that goes on. I mean, that goes on and on throughout the day and night, maybe. They don't like me. I need this. How can I get that? It's 
very limiting, very unhelpful, because it misperceives your brothers, misperceives your sisters and yourself. That's why we want to work with the thinking. Just change the thinking, the thought system. The unhelpful lower thought system has nothing really to offer us. We need a higher thought system of the spirit. Does anybody want to lift up any prayer? Any feelings or thoughts? Amanda? Yesterday, when I came back to Barcelona, yeah. yeah, and we thought, listen one video, the David. Yeah. This video is the event in Spanish with me. The yeah. Yeah, last year. The last year. And beautiful symbol for me. <laughs> we didn't know what we were listening to. We, it just was... Random. Was no, seemingly. Or seeming. <laughs> and... It's... The Compañeros Poderosos. Yeah, like yeah. the companions. Yeah. And when I listen me in in this event, yeah, <laughs> it's like oh wow, <laughs> yeah, beautiful moment for my driving. <laughs> it's like oh, wow, it's very strong emotion for me. Huh. Was there a message you felt from the spirit that that, that actually played? The message, the, the message for me is last night I have one dream. Because when I listen me in, in this program, when I express and direct with everyone, it's like I am happy when I always uh, I'm in the purpose. Yeah. I mean, my program with Diana, we try, or maybe when other people express with me. Okay, but last night, very beautiful because I listened to Jesus ask me, you are the proposed. And it's like, oh my God, because you don't need, you uh, need hacer cosas. Para estar en propósito, tú eres el propósito. You don't have to do other things to... Okay, maybe just leave it for you. To find <laughs> purpose, yes. Because, oh my God, it's very beautiful, Jenny. Hmm. Yeah. No necesitas is estar enfocada is afuera en el propósito. No necesitas estar enfocada afuera en el propósito. You, yeah, you are the purpose. You don't need to seek the purpose. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh my God. It's like it's you, Amanda, all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> when I open my eyes this morning, it's like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, because. It's this connection, yeah, connecting with Jesus all the time in reality. No need other thing, mm -hmm. no need, um, I don't know. I am the mejor ejemplo. Better example. Yeah, with this proposed reality. I don't know, oh, for me, very beautiful, yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, very beautiful yearly yeah. for me last night. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Micah shared on the WhatsApp how powerful it was. But Jesus chose that recording to play in the car. Yes. Yeah. 
That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. The community too was talked about her. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, it was like um, reaffirming um, something. <laughs> and and it's like the lesson today, like we don't know, we can't know what it will look like. We just pray, we have our desire, our prayer, mm. and then we just let, mm. let him lead the way. Yeah. But that can take, yeah, it can take, it takes patience, it seems, a lot of yeah. times, and <laughs> because this video is, you know, it was <laughs> six months ago yeah. or so, I don't know. But it was just a beautiful, like, symbol of um, it was just a beautiful symbol <laughs> of what exactly it's hard to put in words, but mm -hmm. it's yeah, with just with joining with others and mm -hmm. community and my mm -hmm. companions and and you know coming at at the end of our visit there, it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing. I love it when the Holy Spirit chooses the tracks. <laughs> oh, it's <is> so good. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Was it helpful with the meditation, with the sound? The music. Yeah. Mm, what I like it is the sound of the of the bowl of the gong. This yeah. reminds me to come back. Yeah. Because it's possible to have no other sound, just the gong mm -hmm. coming back. Mm -hmm. It took me probably ten minutes to get into it, but then I really I did. I went felt it went quite deep. Yeah. Like it just felt to me like there was just a vastness of space, you know, when you sink below your thoughts or something. Yeah, unified field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but up and below that, I got a sense of sudden fear, terror, mm. just mm. for an instant. Mm. Yeah. Then it went. Mm -hmm. But it was lovely. It was, it was really just a vastness mm. of space. But I think that's what was frightening mm. for a moment as well. Emptiness, like no mm. identity or something there. Mm -hmm. Touch on the ring of fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've gotten, I've had that experience many times in meditation, mm. going through the ring of fear and staying in it, even mm. being in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I like it today in the meditation? The meditation, I was um, very taken by the lesson. So in the beginning, I was uh, going to my. If you sit there, I can see you. Um, to the unreal world, which is the world <laughs> where I live. Mm. And in a kind of neutral way, I was um, seeing people with who I interact. And um, my judgment and my thoughts. Later I was in peace. Can you hear her? You might need to speak up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I just just about. Difficult. <laughs> a little more. Yeah. More low, no? Um, after um, being a moment in peace with all this situations the spirit uh, uh, gave me like a kind of a spark a completely different uh, point of view of view of understanding 
of all that, I was living, like feeling the live with the same people in the same circumstances, but not through my little um, eye. Mm. So I, I was seeing the same people, but in joyful all. Mm. And it has been really nice. <laughs> he likes me to see like this. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Retranslation. Translating. The Holy Spirit retranslated ah. <laughs> in your consciousness how to see. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness, yeah, it's a shift of perception mm. from distorted to true, clear to love. It's wonderful. Yes. I was just going to say that um, David shared in the video yesterday about a little story of all these Vipassana, you know, teachers and that who had a gathering and they all reported going deep into meditation and hitting that wall of fear yeah. was the term he used. Yeah. yeah. He spoke about that on the Saturday movie mm -hmm. session. Oh, mm -hmm. that's yeah. where it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I think. That article that Francis read was was showing that the path of meditation isn't so effective because there have stale issues mm. and fear. Yeah, even though they have done mm. it for like fifty years. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never would have thought how masterful it is for Jesus to give us this path of using the relationships. <laughs> I know, it is. It's very masterful. Yeah, and often the gift of it is not perceived because there is too much projection <clears throat> going on still, you know, so... It is very, this lesson is very helpful also within the relationships because don't perceive the other person very well, you know, the gift that can be brought if you're just humble, if you're just open to, yeah, it can be very powerful. So it's, it is a very good path. <laughs> it's very different. Because you can also have fun with your mate. <laughs> with you? With your mate, <laughs> with your companion. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And with your friends, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. excellent. Yeah, also, often, it's gone very deep in meditation. And one time, <coughs> Went very deep, more high. Sometimes it feels like I go high in the meditation. And I saw the ring of fear. It was literally like a ring. <clears throat> and it was like, like in no man's land, like no, no identity, but also no love, no presence, no connection. I knew that if I could get through the ring of fear, I would be in oneness, like I wouldn't know my home, I would maybe not even come back to the body, that's what it felt like. And then I also saw the fear of death, like why, why people are afraid of death, or the fear of consciousness that is perpetuated after the body's death unless there has been sufficient 
healing and mind training, like there would be this separate consciousness stuck kind of in a very, in a tragic place, you know. You can still work on your mind after the body's death, but but the message was you can you can work on your consciousness now mm. while in the body so that you are not as afraid when you die mm. when the body when you leave the body so yeah that was useful and it was like tell the message was tell this person someone who is not on the spiritual path but I tapped into the fear that they're sick and probably will die, you know, soon. So I tell them they can work on their consciousness so that they don't get stuck in that experience. It's good. We have a good classroom. This word can be used as a very, very healing classroom. Can, like with the lesson today, to let every situation be used in our best interest. Once we see how the ego uses it, we can lay it, give it over to spirit to be used in our best interest. That's good use of time. That's the mind training, so helpful. So let's have a healing day, guys. <laughs> Wherever you are, whatever we are. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Peter, Solway. Amanda, Micah, we love you so much. Yeah. We love you too. And everyone listening, we are recording. So. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> I love so much. Love you. Bye, love you guys. Bye bye, love you. <laughs>